This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Hey there folks, welcome ye all to Dragon's Dogma 2. It is launch day of this very game, people. And we are going to take our time and we're going to have a look at all the settings and we're going to have a look at all the character creation stuff. So I'm not going to be rattling into it too fast. So for those of you not watching it live on Premiere, then you'll have the opportunity to just skip past all that stuff if you really want to. Uh, but I, I know a lot of you out there like to see all of these settings and stuff and see what it's like. The one thing that will probably irritate me a little bit is the frame rates on this game are apparently 30 fps maybe it is uncapped but i think the highest we've seen it goes low 40s so if anything it's just going to frustrate me that it's not six there's not a 60 fps mode but anyway let's crack in people and let's see how we go on so initial settings this is when i started the game up this is the very first thing that came up so uh, subtitles i am going to turn them off and uh, display language english voice language english Lovely. Onward. Uh, adjust until the pattern display very visible. Uh, ah, there we go. So actually making it uh, darker, the pattern's appearing. So barely visible. We'll go with that one, I think. Adjust until barely visible. I don't know what this is looking like on... <laughs> it's probably looking brighter on the recording than it is on my TV. So that, that'll do. Uh, adjust until the picture in the centre disappear. Uh, adjust until the picture in the centre disappears. All right, okay. Well, it's... Uh, I think I might just keep it as the middle one, actually. I can see it a tiny bit. And you can probably see it a bit, but I oh know we'll take it down a smidge. Yeah, so you can see it on the recording, but I can't see it on my TV. So let's just keep it in the center. Enter your age. Why? <laughs> well, I'm a ripe old level 52 people. So let's get that in. Oh, what am I doing? I'm going the wrong way. Wow. Wow. Does that mean it's going to make a character a <laughs> based on that age, or is it just for right? Accept all con terms and conditions. Yes, we have to. Oh, we have to read it. Okay. This game has an auto save feature. Lovely. Enable network features. This will allow you to hire pawns. Yes. Now I don't have Xbox Live, so. It's a good sign that it's not said I need it. Woo! That looks exactly like the marketplace from the first game. <laughs> and it does say just Dragon's Dogma, not Dragon's Dogma 2. <laughs> I'm assuming it's the right game, people. Uh, right, so let's take a look at our options. I, I did give Puppy Max a, a walk, a long walk before I started this. <laughs> So I'll be uninterrupted, but he does seem to be a little bit uh, sniffing around me still. And hopefully he'll go for a little snooze and we'll be okay. Hey, so controls, camera. Uh, now this game is locked at 30 FPS. So that might be the one thing that frustrates me about it. Sorry, that's not true. It's 30 FPS as standard, but it's uncapped. And the from what I've seen, it will play uh, around 40, early 40 FPSs for the Xbox Series X and it was a little bit less on the PS5 uh, but around the same marker. So we'll see how we go. A HDR mode which we're not going to use. So yeah, there's no there is no setting that I can see that lets you change anything to do with the uh, with the FPS or anything. So let's crack straight in. Let's do this. I won't talk over cutscenes, people.
On a guess, lend me your ears. Long as our Febramon suffered, without a true monarch to guide her and her people. Decades have passed since last His Majesty Erland sat atop the Draken throne. Long have we endured, yet it has not been for naught. At last, the bell has tolled on the age of the Consul. At last, we may celebrate the coming of our rightful ruler. The return of the Sovereign. <laughs> My word! Such an inspiring visage! Your Majesty shall have my eternal fealty! No Your Majesty, of oh, how long I have waited this moment! the rightful inheritor of the Draken Throne, chosen by the Dragon as its enemy. Behold and rejoice! Fortune has delivered us our savior at last! At last! Praise be, for only the Sovereign's guidance can lead us true. All hail the Sovereign! All hail! Let all present pledge your allegiance to the Sovereign let us be united in the hope that our legions reign will never end. Long live the Sovereign of Vermont! Long live the Sovereign! Arisen, thou who wouldst slay the dragon, if thou seekest to behold this world in its true aspect, abandon thy reason. Cast aside thine heart and thy life, both. I ask thee to demonstrate thy will, for naught but thine ambition can alter the course of the rivers of fate. Which one of you was it? No need to be shy. I've just got to take down a record of your name and face. Come on, step forward. Nice. I love that. The fact that it's sort of hiding you from view until you've selected all your character creation stuff. Brilliant. You can either select a prisoner <clears throat> to use as a preset or select the hooded prisoner to customize your character's appearance from a blank slate, which is what we're going to do. So, you... okay, close. Yeah, there you go. That's brilliant. I love that idea. That's fantastic. I oh, like the little cat ones over here. Nice. So that's all your presets. Got an arrogant look about you. Are you the one then? A. I... I wonder if you can pick a preset and then customize it. But anyway, we'll do a we'll do from scratch. Aha! Uh -huh. I thought I recognized you.
Here we go, because we want to see all this stuff. Choose a race, body type, and base head to determine the character's basic appearance. You will then be able to make further edits by selecting Customize. Once finalized, the Arisen race cannot be changed. Okay. So, as I always do, I'll probably go a female character. And... Oh, this is base body type. A. Eh? Alright, oh, that's the beginning. I was going to say, I hope it's not a never-ending loop, otherwise I'll not realise not realize which one's which. Right, okay. Uh, that one. We'll probably go for that one, maybe. The different heights as well, yeah. That one's slightly taller. And they're really tall at the end. So I think we'll go with this middle one here. Yeah, that's the one. Adjust the face to suit your liking by making selections over three stages. You will then be able to use the head you have chosen as a base for further customization. Okay. I think that one or that one. I thought we'll go for this one. <clears throat> All right, so we've got base head one of three. Base this is base head two of three. So this is, seems to be. Oh, mm, not overly sure. I know it's changing the hair, but is it changing the face as well? No. No, I think the face is staying the same. It's just the hair that's changing, <laughs> and possibly the skin tone as well. Might go for this, actually. Bit of a change, isn't it? Just go through all the options so you can see them all. Yeah, we'll go for this one. All oh, right, it seems to be... That seems to be slimming down the face. Yeah, it's the face shape, that seems to be. Yeah, we'll go with that one, I think. You have selected a base head. Would you like to customise it further? Um, yeah, okay. Let's see what it says. Yeah, okay. So this just lets us customise everything now. Marvellous. So that's how you can spin it round. And yeah, you can change the body aspects. I think we're oh hello, posture. Nice. Uh movement style, here we go. Not sure what that's changing, to be fair. Yeah, I think it makes it more sort of... In your, yeah, a bit more aggressive if you go higher up. Okay, let's just keep the default for that, I think. Let's go back. Lower body, upper body. I'm not going to do too much with this, but we'll just say uh, you can do so much stuff in here. I'm just going to keep the defaults, but I mean, you can do all sorts of arm size, torso depth, chest height, chest shape, chest size. The head's the same. You can do all sorts of stuff with that. I am looking for, here we go. Uh, here we go. This is the bit we're interested in for me. Um, and you can change the hairstyle in here as well. We'll have a look at all of these. So let's see. So we've got our base head.
tip color yeah here we go all right you can you can do let me just get this right people so we've got head skin brow yeah that's skin color okay so that's not hair so this is all hair here hairstyle I've got root color and tip color yeah so it looks like you can get a nice tone to your hair the way you actually want it rather than just picking a bog standard color or you can have two tones of hair which is quite cool a uh, hairstyles we've got all sorts in here I guess So we'll rattle through them. Oh, nice. <laughs> I mean, there's a huge amount to choose from. So I'm up to number 40 here. I'm assuming it's going to mix in the men's and the women's together. All right, we're back to the beginning now. So there was 57 in total. That's basically my hair. I think that's the one we started on, yeah. 20. Let's go with that. And... Uh, now, this could get tricky, however. Uh, Alright, okay. No, maybe not. So, I think you need to mix the two to get a shade that you really want, maybe. Yeah, so that that's the only thing. It could get a bit tricksy as to... Like, if I want to try and get some sort of reddish hair, which is what I normally pick out, I think getting that might be quite tricksy. <laughs> could be here for a while, people. Oh, Alright, that's just doing the ends of the hair. Right, okay, fine. I've got you. Okay. Um, it just seems to be, yeah, I'm not getting a huge vibe for any sort of, well, that's sort of gingery, I suppose. That's brown, I suppose. I suppose that's fairly red. Well, oban. Yeah, I'm not seeing any sort of gingery reds in there. So let's just go for a... Something we think's close. For the amount there is, I mean, there's near on 200 of these bloody things. <laughs> We're getting there, people. It seems to be going around a loop of the same colours for me. Ah, here we go. That's... See, that's kind of a, a really bright, gingery type vibe, isn't it? Yeah, that is only doing the tips, definitely. That's the same colour, isn't it, pretty much? Alright, okay. I think we'll just go for this. I don't know though, because if I go up to that one, it kind of all goes a bit darker, doesn't it? Anyway, this isn't very exciting to watch, is it? So let's get on with it. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> There's an easier way to do it, people. Apparently. Default colours. Ah, right, so you can actually... I'm assuming make your own colour then, if that's the case. Okay, so if we do the same thing, right, okay. Well, that's answered a question, hasn't it? Yeah, here we go. So these are reds. I just can't see it on my screen that they're reds.
Yeah, so they're kind of Oban actually in this menu. So let's go with uh Let's go with that one, I think. Okay. And then tip colour will do something bright. Go with that. Okay. Well, that answered the question. I wonder if you can do yeah, You can do that with all of it. <laughs> right, okay. Well, that was a lesson learned, wasn't it? Bloody hell, we've been here for about 15 minutes, Steve. What's happening? Okie doke. Right, let's crack in then. So we've got that. Loads of stuff you can do there. Eyebrows, of course. We could try and make the same, but we're just going to keep them as default. Um, you've got a whole bunch of different types of eyebrows in there. And thickness and such like. And the next one over is makeup, which... Hey... Can we zoom in? Yes, we can. There you go. So if you want to zoom in on the face, you can do. Uh, see, that's not changing on the screen, so I assume I have to actually select one to make it happen. Hmm. Right, that isn't changing on my screen, so I don't know what's going on with that. It could be how thick we've got it, maybe. Lip colour spread. Doesn't seem to change anything. Right, I don't know what's happening there, guys, because it's not actually doing anything. Ah, there we go. So lip style one doesn't reflect what's underneath, but this one does. There we go. That's it. Bit darker. There we go. Nice. Okay, I think we'll leave it at that, people, for now. And last one is tattoos and markings, which, uh, well, I mean, there's a huge amount you can do in there, which I'm not going to spend time in. <laughs> you can put dirt on as well, by the looks of it. Dirt pattern. Okay. There we are. I think that's enough of that, people. There's loads. You can customise to your heart's content in there. That's pretty impressive, I have to say. Uh, right. Confirm. Uh, Finalise. There we go. Uh, feminine human. Body we've already done. Detailed customization. Not sure what that's all about. Why is that there still? Uh, voice. There we go. Oh, how do we test it? Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> Is it just me or do they all sound the same? <laughs> Sounds like men. Yeah, there are not too many to choose from, but the character's not going to be speaking by the sounds of it. It's just going to be noises, so we'll just take the top one. Vocation. Here we go. Let's uh, zoom out, shall we? A oh, it's got to be Archer, hasn't it? Nice. So let's just read what it says. Fighters. Fighters battle their enemies in close quarters, wielding a sword and shield. Their mighty attacks and counter-attacks allow them to cut down foes with ease. Vocation can be changed later. Excellent. 
Archers wield the bow, striking down foes from a distance. Their arrows are quick to find enemies' weak points, turning the tide of battle. Mages use their staves to cast a variety of spells. Their command of enchantments and curative magics make them a helpful addition to the part to any party. Thieves appear at, as a flash of daggers on the battlefield. To quick, uh, too quick for the eye. Their speed and agility allows them to break through the enemy's guard with ease. Excellent. Right, we're going to go for the archer. Let's do it, people. Let's get in there. Oh, name. Oh, Monica. Right, okay. Uh, go with our default. Uh, ah, yeah, I seem to remember. Let's see if there's a sky in there. No oh, bloody hell. <laughs> There's a sly. Can maybe go sly. Yeah, not a sky though. <laughs> Should go for sly. Sly sky. That'll do. Age. Sure, why not? Let's be a young warrior. Nice. Looking pretty badass, people. I'm happy with that. Finalize your character and proceed. Uh, why not? Let's do it. Got there in the end, people. But the L half an hour menus. I like that look in your eyes. It is queerly brazen for a pawn. Most of your kind have eyes blank as a cadaver's. Mayhap it is only natural, seeing as how you rise from the dead. There's aught different about you, though. Could it be that you fear death just as we mortals do? Worry not, Vessel. Three days here, and you'll be longing for death's sweet embrace. Come along, you feckless dullards. All right, she so just kept just hitting next there to get it going. Uh, one or more add-ons added. You will gain access to them as you progress through the game. Yeah, I didn't get the deluxe edition. This is just the very standard edition, but it did come with an add-on. Can't remember what it was. I think it was some boon at the beginning of fights. I'd hasten home were this not my duty. Okay, well, immediate panning around. Uh, it doesn't feel too bad. It feels quite smooth for a 30 or above. Ah, wait a minute. Hail. I would fain aid you if you are in need. I tell you, graphically, it looks lovely, though. You think I care to hear your troubles? Yeah, cool. She can speak to the characters, which is quite cool. Yeah, I'm very impressed with it visually so far. Wow. I mean, I I was never that impressed with the original game's sort of graphics and stuff. It was a great game, but it never visually kind of wowed me. But this is a different story, I think you'll find. So, so far at the bottom right-hand corner, we've got the buttons that we're able to use by the looks of it. And then we've got our radial map on the bottom left. I'm assuming the one in the middle is our health bar, possibly, and another form of bar. Spell bar or something. And we've got a little marker on that radial map that's a yellow sort of diamond shape. Excavation site. The hole. Well, I have to say, so far, I'm actually quite impressed with the 
All right, it's not 60 FPS, but I'm very impressed with how smooth it is so far at 30. Well, probably probably hitting about 40 maybe at the moment. So it's not bugging me at all yet. Pray, do not overexert yourself. This is no place for one of your ilk. Tis harsh beyond measure. Even we pawns are pushed to the brink. You ought not anger the overseer. Let us proceed to the site. <laughs> Lip sync's got a bit to be desired, but uh, oh, jog. Nice. Click L stick. Yeah, I mean, I'll have uh, rendered the video together at uh, what you're probably seeing as 60 FPS, but it'll be, well, it'll say on YouTube it's 60. The overseer will show you no mercy. But obviously it's running at about, uh, about 40 or so from the comparisons I've seen. Oh, hello, we can go in here. Can't pick anything up yet. Whoa, steady. It might tell me to get back in line, but uh, it's letting me wander about at the minute. He's actually following me. I might do myself a disservice here to be fair. <laughs> might trigger something I'm not meant to. Wow, check that out, people. That looks awesome. It's got the sun bouncing off the sea. Brilliant. Absolutely gorgeous, people. Right, come on then. I'll follow you now. My curiosity is satisfied. It would be unwise to disobey. The overseer will show you no mercy. Uh, okay. He's actually following me, I think, rather than the other way around, so I'm not sure where I'm meant to be going. Down here, maybe. <laughs> Being left to my own devices at the minute. It is ungraying where I've been, I think, so I've got a checkpoint there as well, or a save. Does the D-pad do anything? Not yet. Aha! You can see our map by hitting the, well, I still call it the back button, people. It will forever be the back button to me. Time for you there we go. To work. I think this is only confusing because I've turned off subtitles, but <laughs> you need to remember to hit next when they speak to you. It says down at the bottom right hand side on the A button. Aha! Main menu. So we can get to the map in here as well. We've got a quest list, which is... Gowled Awakening. Equipment. That's where we'll do all the funky stuff. Once we've actually got some equipment. Uh, I don't think I've got anything that... Yeah, just the stuff that we've started with. No extras with the game or anything. Status. On our stats. History. Ah, NPCs that we've spoken to. Quite, yeah, it's quite interesting. Oh, there was a photo mode straight off the bat. A lot of people don't get. A lot of companies don't give you that until about ten weeks into the game's launch. And system save it. Yeah. All right, you can do a save and continue. I was wondering if you could do a, a manual. Excellent. Onward. You were prepared to work. Then you ought begin by carrying stones out from the station <laughs> and bringing them here. 
Yes, the first thing it's going to teach us is lifting stuff up. Uh, ah, hold. Right, okay. No. <laughs> what do you want me to do, mate? It doesn't seem to be showing me how to do anything. Ah, light the lantern. Oh, LB and... Ah. Nice. I wonder if you have to fill it up with oil. You had to fill it up with oil in the last one, didn't you? Right, there must be a way of picking this up. Item shortcut. All ah, right, okay. That's what that is. So LB uh, oh, hits the D, gets activates the D-pad where you can do certain things. Um, I don't seem to be getting any kind of option to lift something up. So let's just go further down. Maybe I have to pick them up from down here and take them back up there. There we go. That's the badger. RT to pick up. The vicinity is quite cluttered. Pray leap. Oh, 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 that... Well, I've got to say, thus far, I know there's not a lot of happening on screen, but thus far I'm very happy with the frame rate as it is. And this is 4K as well, I believe, although I can't give you it on YouTube in 4K. It is 4K. Oh, hello. Uh, where are we putting them? <laughs> I don't seem to have a marker. Oh, release, right. I think I'm just to put them here. A job well done. Now the next step is to... The next step is what, sorry? Oh. What is this commotion? Perhaps we ought to investigate. It's all about to kick off, people. Ah, you can dash as well. Dragon! Oh no, it's not. It's a Medusa. What are they called? Gargons. Something like that. some wobbly gargon boobs going on there. <laughs> Get me out of here. Now. Come on. Give me my bow. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Woo. Loose. Oh. All right, you can hold it down. Oh, no, maybe not. Oh, RB to steady shot. Got you, okay. Oh, front kick. Nice. Oh, I've run out of stamina. I see. Grab and throw objects, RT and RB. Well, apart from what objects? Uh, <laughs> what objects am I grabbing? Ow. Is there a box over there? There we go. I would recommend Approach an enemy and press RT to. Oh, grab onto them! Uh, that changed, I'm sure it did. X to attack. All right, she's got a little dagger with her. Nice. Brilliant.
It's a lonely life being a beast, isn't it, eh? Off you trot. Are you on hand? You won't flee while you can. After all, we'll charge against you. You cannot linger in this place forever. You have lost your memories. It is surely the work of a foul curse, but worry not. You need only believe in your own destiny. Yeah, using that uses stamina, the old dash. You'd be aware of that. Flee for your life! Whoa! Nice. Run for your lives! Run to the hills! Well, the sea, as it happens. No one could survive a fall from this height. Not even a pawn. Yeah, visually very impressive, I have to say. Looks gorgeous. Currently sitting at an 87, I think, on Metacritic. Nothing creepy about that guy at all. Ugh, humans, eh? A really beautiful start to the game in comparison to the original. Interesting it's calling itself Dragon's Dogma and not Dragon's Dogma 2 in the titles and stuff. I quite like that, actually. <clears throat> a retelling of a story, I believe they're punting it as. Known as a Rift Stone. Pray, seek it out. 
If you're truly the Arisen, then our paths will surely cross again. <laughs> Slightly better landing for us than him. Are you all right? What happened here? A griffin appears one moment and falls the next. And now you stand before me. Was it you then? The one who was riding on its back? It is a wonder you survived. Accompany me to the stronghold. We'll treat your wounds and hear your story. Very well. Woohoo! Denji's first taste of freedom. Escaped the bonds of slavery. Yeah, well, it's still looking pretty nice out here, panning-wise as well, people, yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. Good-looking game. Tales beginning. Just jot that down. I think we shall have to make this a slightly extended episode for the first part, as uh, we did spend a lot of time in the creations and stuffs. Salubrious draft. Well, that's very good, thank you. Ah, you can sheathe and draw with LT. All right, so LT just. Put your weapon away. I, I have always liked that in RPGs where I can put my weapons away. I'm not like I'm not a fan of the ones that auto does it for you every time or doesn't let you put them away. Just I love that extra control, people. Exactly. A control freak. Been strained from the tall air since the war. Herb collecting. Can you imagine any citizen of Vermont being sent there? Uh, view tutorial logbook. Yeah, okay. Uh... All ah, right, okay, it's the back button. Uh, really? That's my map, not my logbook. Or do I need to hold it down? Ah, there we go. So if you hold it down, you get the logbook. If you tap it, you get the map. The total weight of the items you are carrying affects your movement speed. The heavier your pack, the slower your movement speed and more stamina will be will expend. Remain light on your feet by sharing your burden with pawns, depositing items in storage at an inn, or selling off anything you don't need. Yep, yeah, okay. Trying to carry too much at once will cause you to become over-encumbered. Over in this state, you are unable to dash or jump, and you may need to discard items or give some things to your pawn to carry in order to flee your, uh, free yourself up. Marvellous. Excellent. Battle. Fine. Goblins. Let's take up your weapon, sir. You'll be needing it. Sir. Madam, I think you'll find. If you find your strength flagging, buy the curative or have a bit of green one. Alright, I can just use RB and uh When one of the thieves comes. Best guard or dodge. So not yeah. So just doing X kind of auto aims at stuff a little bit, and using RB you can do a direct uh, an aim. Are more destructive, but you defeated the goblins. Your chance to land one the moment the enemy. There are oft items to be scavenged from the bodies of monsters and their ilk. If you're not squeamish about picking at their bones, that is. All right. 100, 100 gold. I'll uh, not force you to receive treatment, but I'd at least like. 
Well, you just told me to loot the bodies, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we're going to have to be careful. I've just picked up a goblin club for no good reason other than to sell it. Okay, we'll keep following him, actually. We'll do some uh, wandering around once with... I'm just curious if you can swim. Where do you think you're going? You can't just run off now. Oh, caught a fish. <laughs> uh, debilitations are negative statuses with effects that can range from inflicting damage, steady intervals to making the target vulnerable to a specific type of attack. They're not exclusive to the Arisen and their pawns, but can be inflicted upon their enemies as well, granting a fierce edge in battle if applied wisely. Consult each debilitations entry for more information about its effects. I'm assuming this is because I'm wet, maybe. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Tread carefully by water's edge. The brune, the brine lurk deep in the waters, yeah. So basically that was a tale of don't go in the water, basically. That guy dying, the looks of it. Fair enough. That's one less thing to search. <laughs> nice. Little kick there. Karate kick. Nice. When an enemy is flinching, you can pick them up. All right. <laughs> Level up. Woo woo. Level two. Health, stamina, ETC goes up. If I remember rightly, the uh, I'm not overly convinced there's any sort of upgrade tree and stuff you can do. I think you just auto level up. It's all about your uh, moves and stuff in this game, I think. Archer. Precision of the bow allows archers to strike down on foes from a safe distance, and it only takes a few well-aimed arrows to create an opening for their allies at the vanguard to exploit. Experienced archers can add a range of special arrows to their quiver that may, inf uh, may inflict debilitations upon their foes. Press X to loose an arrow, which will automatically target a nearby foe. Use L to aim direction and tap X repeatedly to continue to fire at the same enemy. Loose allows for ease of aim, yeah, but as its, uh, as its arrows inflict minimal harm and can only travel so far, it's best to use a combination. Yeah, so if you're aiming, you can shoot further. Right, that's good to know. Uh, press RB to steady shot. We know that. With deadly precision, striking if those weak points will allow... Yeah, because when I hit the weak points specifically, we need to aim. Fair enough. I like it. Nice. First bit of battle. Welcome, Arisen. We pawns have long awaited your arrival. What is this? Pawns? They bend the knee to you so readily, but then... No. Surely you cannot be the Arisen. You seek the Riftstone, do you not? We can take you to it. Pray. Come this way. That rhymed. Pray, come this way. Before you stands a rifter. Tis a gate by which we of the Pawn Legion may cross o'er into this world. Pray, summon your pawn. Simply paint with your mind's eye the loyal attendant whom he would have serve you. Let's pick a pawn then.
You will now summon your main pawn, the loyal companion who will accompany you throughout your adventure. What, what should they look like? Try to envisage their appearance. You can either begin with a preset or choose to create your own pawn from a blank slate. Now, uh, let's do blank slate so you guys can see what you can do here. Uh, I think we're going to go with a warrior, an up-close person. We'll do mage later. Well, I don't know. Mages are so powerful and they can boon everything. I wonder if I should do... Yeah, I might do a mage. There's two distance characters though, isn't it? Uh, we could do a warrior. Let's do a warrior. Let's go for something a bit crazy, like a cat creature. Yeah, big beastly warrior. Let's have it. <laughs> we could go giant warrior. Yeah, we'll go with that guy, I think. Nice! This is awesome! Look at that! Maybe I should have gone one of these myself. Oh, that's beast, isn't it? Look at that. Black cat. I feel like I want to go the light colour if we're in caves and stuff. It might be easier to see them and stuff. <laughs> don't know. The black one's good, though, isn't it? Yeah, I quite like the light one as well. I like his dreads. Let's do that. Now, there's a lighter version of a die. Oh, he's got a dodgy eye. Bless him. <laughs> Dude's been to the hairdresser. I kind of... I think I want that guy, but maybe that colour. But I don't know if I can change that. Let's have a look. It's quite proud, didn't he? You've selected the base head. Would you like to customize further? Yeah. So there you go. You can change the fur colors there. So much you can do in this by the looks of it. Full pattern. Yeah, let's do that. I think we'll go for the more sort of leopardy cheetah type pattern maybe yeah go with that one pattern color presets all oh, right oh shit what have I done here I think that's what we were on now oh, these are because I wanted that color didn't I nice I think I'll go with that one. Okay, but there's loads you can do in here. I'm not going to spend any more time in it, but uh, yeah, that's our dude for now. Uh, body, head, upper body, lower body, posture. So it's all the same stuff that we use to create ourselves, pretty much. Okay, I'm going to finalise that. A masculine beastron. Body's done. Detailed customization. That's where we've just been. Vocation. Here we go. Yeah, I think we'll have him as that. Look at that beast. Yeah, definitely a fighter, that one. Inclination. Kind hearted. Oh, nice. Kind hearted. Uh, compassionate, devoted, and dutiful, the most obedient sort of pawn, favours a balanced approach with an emphasis on support. Now, nah, we want him more up in in the face, don't we? Rational, shrewd strategizing. A pawn characterised by caution. Favours defence, no. Simple, curious, earnest, and adventurous. A pawn with their heart on their sleeve. Enjoys exploring and gathering items and is always up for a challenge. Straightforward, candid, flippant, and impulsive. A pawn unbound by presets. Preset, precepts. Uh, 
enjoys the thrill of combat tackling fierce foes head on with a daring assaults yeah with daring assaults let's have that voice the people here are evacuated and safe but there are more who can yet be saved yeah i think i want something a bit more beastly people here are evacuated and the people here are evacuated the people here are evacuated and safe the people here are evacuated the people here are it seems the rain there are more who can yet be saved there are more who can yet be saved it seems the rain has abated it seems the rain has abated former arisen appear to be plentiful in this world former arisen appear to be plentiful yeah we'll go for the second one i think let's do it people name right uh leon the lion i think we'll go for something like that leon God's sake, bloody monikers. What about Chandlers and Rosses? <laughs> uh, thank you. Is there a Leon or not a Leon? There's a Leon. Oh, there is. Look, check that out. Sweet. Not sly and sky like me. This world is connected to innumerable other realms beyond the rift, which pawns such as myself are able to traverse. <laughs> it's very partially. My kind is duty bound to serve you, Arisen, and to use the knowledge we glean in these distant worlds to your benefit. I myself look forward to traveling alongside you and using my experiences beyond the rift to enrich your adventures. Well, I'll be a pawn summoning before my very eyes. You truly are the Arisen, then. Strange. I thought the Arisen was in the capital. Surely there's only meant to be one Arisen. Fine. This is all beyond my ken. <laughs> I feel like they've got the Japanese lip syncing on. The watchhead would know what to do, I'm sure. Though, as luck would have it, he's away. I suppose we'll save any further questions till the watchhead returns. You're free to do as you like afore then. Excellent. Can I visit a shop and buy some armor? You've no memories, you say? Mayhap you could make for Melv, then. It was set upon by the dragon not long ago. The Arisen is said to bear some deep connection to the dragon. Should you be Arisen, mayhap you'll recall aught of import there. Border Watch Outpost. Riftstones. By touching a riftstone, the Arisen can travel to the bridge Artwick's world. Worlds, which a great many pawns traverse as they journey beyond the rift. This allows the Arisen to summon pawns who meet their specified preferences. These pawns will not level up while they are accompanying you. However, so you may find. Uh, however, so you may find that you need to hire new support pawns. Yeah, it's the same as before at regular intervals, which is quite good because it means you keep mixing up your team. So a pawn will only do you for a certain length of time, and then once you, once you get into areas that are more powerful, you want to go get a better, a more leveled up pawn. And I think they get more expensive as well as you uh, as you pick the higher hey, class ones. Pray, ask all you wish to know. I shall answer, if tis within my power to do so. Ah, here we go. Conversation choices. Tell me of pawns. Nomads, we are oft called. Born in other worlds, we travel here by means of the rift stones that we might aid you, Arisen. However, 
I cannot speak as to our true nature, for I know of it not. None of us do. We do not need to. We merely do as we are commanded. I'm wondering if I should turn subtitles on. Can I go into settings here? No. <clears throat> uh, tell me of the rift stones. Rift stones are gates that connect this world to a multitude of others. By their power have we crossed into this world. And when our mission is done, by their power shall we return to our own. At the moment, the only way I know if they're finished is if I just wait for them to stay, stay silent long enough. Tell me of the Arisen. Tis the name given to fates chosen. Those destined to command the Pawn Legion and safeguard the world from the threat of the dragon. Okie doke. Even with your memories lost to you, I am afraid you cannot escape your fate. Another time? May fortune speed you on your way, Arisen. Marvellous. Got 120 rift coins or whatever they're called. Excellent. I feel like this is the same camp from the original game. But could be wrong. But I'll tell you what I've not seen so far. I've not seen any sign of uh, screen tearing whatsoever, which is really cool. And I'm pretty happy with the frame rate. It does feel like it's uh, sitting at around 40, I have to say. And it's nice and smooth. And it's nice and pretty. And we're getting... Well, I'm getting true 4K, obviously. I'm only posting up to you at 1080p. But there we are. Very happy with that. Right, where are we going? There's Leon. Am I meant to touch the rift stone again? Ah, here we go. <laughs> Let's try that again. Yeah, here we go. So I should be able to. So these, the, the these are pit player. These are characters that other players have made. A, uh, and the majority of them are all. Oh, there's a level five. Uh, how many points have we got? 120. So we can we can hire someone for up to 120 rift coins. Are they a mage? Yeah, that's a mage. So that might be tempting. Because we've got a permanent warrior now. A... That's a level 2. It will go for a level 5 because that will last us a bit longer. I'll carefully conserve my strength and endeavour to survive every battle by way of sound strategy and defensive tactics. A, so it tells you what they are specced as, I think. Uh, view pawn details. Here we go. A elemental resistances, I assume that is. Snow and lightning, debilitation, elements. Um, location, mage. Ah, here we go. Weapon skills, flagration. Core skills, magic bolt, and anodyne. Uh, not any augments by the looks of it, which is kind of what I was looking for. Pawns are awarded badges as a mark of their accumulated knowledge and expertise, whether that be proficiency in combat or experience exploring. Pawns with badges are more helpful to the arisen in the word and indeed, in word and indeed. Monsters badges are awarded to pawns who have defeated a certain number of particular type of monster. Such pawns are by then so experienced with the creature in question that they know the best way to defeat it and will offer beneficial advice to the arisen. Field badges are awarded to pawns who have camped a sufficient number of times in a particular region when adventuring in said region. The pawn will display their knowledge of the area by offering beneficial advice to the arisen. Excellent. I like it. <clears throat> okay, so this one doesn't seem to have any boon stuff. Uh, it's an option though. Lua. How do we... Oh, cancel. Let's see what... Uh, it's a level 2, level 2, level 5. Here we go. What's this one? You are wise indeed to have sought my aid. <clears throat> a... 
117 still. Bug ray. Oh, she's got more moves. Uh, Focus Bolt, Anodyne, Magic Bolt, Palladium, Flagration. Hmm. I'm just going to take this one and see what happens. <laughs> Not sure about the boons. I don't seem to have any. It will be an honor to serve by your side. Yes. Uh, what was your name again? Can't remember. Pawn quests. Pawn quests are tasks given to your main pawn to be completed beyond the rift. You set the task and must stipulate a reward for the arisen who hires your main pawn to receive upon the task's completion. Pawn quests are provide valuable opportunities for you to obtain items and acquire pawn badges so you should endeavor to get your pawn hired as often as possible when setting a reward uh, when setting a reward for the arisen who hires your main pawn to receive you can either select specific items or nominate a sum of gold items will be removed from your inventory gold will be subtracted from your funds it is also possible to trade with other arisen by setting the retrieval of items you desire as the pawn's uh, pawn quest objective or object however it said right can we get out of here now then I'm, i can only hire well i haven't got any points to hire anything else anyway so oh I could have set a pawn quest right enough, but I didn't do. There we go. So we've got Hawk now, and we've got Leon. Really now, you mustn't shirk your duty, lest you forget. To be a risen, we serve here. I'm well aware of that. Thank you. All right, there is a yellow marker down there. Actually, I was wondering where to go next. So is there a shop anywhere? Any loose coin about? Well met. Well met. Ah, there we go. Let's try selling any crap we've picked up. Uh, shore fish. Consume to recover health. All right, I suppose can hang on to that for now. I'm sure I picked up a club though. She won't buy it though. I think that's the the deal. Possibly. Oh no, she does. Uh, sell stuff like that so i don't know i'm sure i picked up uh unless it wasn't a club unless it was that meat just looked like a club <laughs> uh fluted bow yeah i don't have any money do i i've got 100 g's yeah uh, a yeah i don't have enough to buy anything Okay, gonna have to do some fighting, people, and some exploring. Monsters and bandits are a plague upon my business. <laughs> right, you are. Always a pleasure. No purchases to be made today. I Armories and apothe apothecaries. Easy for me to say. Browsing was enough. Buying and selling items and equipment can be bought and sold in shops or by dealing with peddlers. Frequently uh, frequenting a shop or befriending a seller may induce them to offer you valuable items, including rarities that are not available anywhere else. Peddlers in particular, uh, peddlers in particular are apt to increase the variety of their wares if they get enough business from their customer. Uh, variations in price when dealing with merchants pay close attention to the prices asked and offered you may find that some items can be sold for a higher price in particular region furthermore if a merchant if a merchant or peddler has high affinity for you they are likely to sell you at a reduced cost wonderful thank you so we're going to have to look a bit crap for a while until we find some armor or buy some. Well, I think this is probably a good place to wrap it up once we've had a little wonder about. Autosave data cannot be relied upon to save your progress in this world. It is recommended that you rest at inns at regular intervals if you wish to ensure the reliability uh, of your saved data. Yeah, but that's going to cost me money, isn't it? Hi there. You seem well tired. Tell you what. 
You can stay here tonight free of charge. Yay. I'll expect coin from tomorrow, mind. Oh, yeah, no, I've got actual coin. I've got 100, haven't I? My pa always used to say, there's naught a good night's sleep can't fix. Not much else I can offer, I'm afraid, but you'll find all sorts at a finer inn. Uh, licorice all sorts. Aye. Being armed is better than being defenceless, even if you're untrained. Still, it is worth devoting yourself to a vocation if you can. Opens up new doors, it does. You should stop by the inn in Melv if you get the chance. No hard feelings if you prefer it. They've Staying at an inn fully restores your party's health and stamina. It also recovers the lost gauge, which represents a reduction in your health and accumulates when you're taking damage. When resting at an inn, you can choose whether to rise in the morning or at night. Useful if you need to set out on a particular at a particular time. Foresighted adventurers will stay at inns regularly to avoid risks when travelling far afield. Much more to offer. We must rest, though the sun is still up. Hmm. I don't recall it saying what time I wanted to wake up, but anyway. One or more add-ons acquired. Uh, added items will be sent to item storage. Item storage can be accessed at any inn by speaking with innkeeper. No. Okay. Was I headed? Woo! Leon's leveled up to level two. Tales beginning. Completed. Uh, in Dragon's Wake. Marvellous. Right, let's just speak to him again. If you're looking for lodgings, and if you'd like to change your vocation, come see me anytime. You can give him a gift. I'm going to give you a fish. How odd. <laughs> You're welcome. Gifts tutorial. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> right, hang on a minute. Right, it's got very confused all of a sudden. I've beds to spare if you're looking for I wanted to go to my storage, which is why I'm speaking to him. Your vocation. Come see me anytime. Here we go. Organize storage. Uh withdraw. Oh, hello. A uh, can we compare? Got daggers as well. I feel like uh, select multiple, confirm, cancel. <sighs> I want to compare it with what I've got on, basically. It seems to be... Oh, that's my weight that's going up. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's telling me on the right-hand side. Duh. Uh, so my strength will go up from 103 to 130 with that superior flute bow. Marvellous. A, I think the little red square that's underneath them is probably telling me it's not for my character. Yeah, it is. It's for those two are for the warrior character. Mind you, I could use. I can give them to what's his name, can't I? I think. Ah, wait a minute. Oh, hang on. How do I change to? Ah, god damn it! Right on the left hand side, I've got. My three characters, <laughs> but I don't know how to change character. Select items to withdraw from storage with L, but how do I change? Ah, there we go, RT, that's it. <laughs> but now I've taken them out, I can't see, so. Ooh, combine. Combining materials, you can combine two materials to create a new item. When combining, you can either choose the materials individually or select a combination that you have previously tried. You can also prioritize the inventory you want materials to be taken from first, the originals or the pawns. All right, made a draft. I was expecting to get a little achievement there, but I didn't. 
And there's recipes in there as well, I just noticed as I came out. Right. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Come back soon. Hey, how do I give him stuff then? Now, let's have a look. Or do I just do that in my own equip thing? Let's have a look. Equipment. So. Ah, there we go. Nice. Ah, wait. That's the one he's got equipped. So how do I give that to him? Mm. Mm. Ah, here we go. Give. We hit A and we give to Leon. And we hit A and we give to Hawk. And I'm going to put that one on. Oh, hello. Have these got sockets in them? It looks like they might have. Yeah, the fluted bows look the same, irrelevant of the... Doesn't seem to be a junk. Okay, so now I've given him his sword. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, those those items were a lot better. So, 147. I thought, that, I, thought I picked out a shield. I am just on swords, that's why. So it's going up by uh, 113 to 147. Can't seem to do a... Oh no, I can't give it because it's equipped. Plum. I don't know if I have to give back in order to sell or that sort of thing. Yeah, the shield's already equipped. Could have sworn I picked a shield out of that inventory, but anyway. And yeah, 145 to 167 magic for her as well. Oh. You have to be a certain level to wear it. Is that what it is? I'm not seeing why she can't wear that. It's not telling me. <laughs> so... Am I missing something really obvious here, people? I'm not seeing level item uh, for a weapon. All right, we'll wait and see. I know that the the lion guy had already leveled up, so it's possible that's where it. No, because she's level five. Is there different types of staff or different types of? I don't know. I don't know why she can't wear it, people. It's just a superior version of what she's already wearing. Yeah, still got this thing on it. All right, well, let me know in the comments below if I've not figured that out by the time uh, I, I, I post up the next parts. Let me know in the comments below if you know the answer to that, people. Right, all very interesting stuff. A bit of a slow end to... A slow start and a slow end, but we've got some action in the middle, people, and we've got to see a bit of the world. Now, in the next part, we're going to go cracking out of these gates and get on with the action, I think. Uh, it looks like we're... Well, he said just do what you want until such and such a time, didn't he? So I assume we're going to be going out there. There's a marker. Well, out there or up there. There is a marker on the uh, radial map, which isn't on this map as it happens. Ah, there we go. Ah, that was the encampment map, that's why. Yeah, so we've uh, we've to come out of here and go to there by the looks of it. 
So there you go, people. That will be the beginning of the next part. I thoroughly enjoyed that, people. I can see me getting a lot of hours of this Let's Play in. <laughs> anyway, let me know in the comments below if you're playing it and if you're enjoying it. Uh, I'm really, I'm really, really impressed with it. I mean, I'm, I'm more impressed with this than I was with the original by far. Even the like the cinematography at the beginning, the direction of the game from the beginning. The beginning of the original one wasn't great. I, I, I've loved the storytelling in this. Okay, I would have preferred it to be 60 FPS, but it is playing really smooth at probably around 40 uh, and low 40 FPSs for a lot of the time. Yeah, super impressed with it, people. Really, really nice. Well, there you are, folks. There will be plenty more of this to come. It has been an honour and a privilege serving for you in Dragon's Dogma 2 on the Xbox Series X, and I shall catch you in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.